bless every one of them. This day is also a day to remember those who have betrayed their country. Remember when they ran across the border to Canada to avoid military service? The cowards, the peaceniks, the demonstrators like Jane Fonda and Tom Hayden who enjoy the wonders of this country, the freedom, the opportunity, yet they are unwilling to fight to preserve those freedoms and opportunities. These idiots, these punks, these peaceniks are more anxious to criticize and humiliate our country and our leaders. During the Vietnam War, our fighting men were degraded and ridiculed and undermined by the left-wing peacenik cowards in this country. On this Memorial Day, let's remember the cowards who spit in the faces of our fighting men with great disdain. Let's remember the cowards with disdain. But let's save our final thoughts today for those heroes who make us all proud, proud to be Americans. And I say to the families listening to me tonight who have lost loved ones in the line of duty, remember your loved ones did not die in vain. Because of them, America is still standing strong and free, a beacon of hope, a beacon of light for the entire world. God bless our vets. God bless them who gave their lives for their country. God bless America. Everybody sing along now, come on. Everybody's singing, come on. From the mountain. It's Memorial Day, let me hear you. To the Loud and clear. To the ocean. God bless this country. time now everybody on the freeway Thank you very much. Okay, and here we go, everybody, on the uh, Wally George Show uh, for this uh, Monday Memorial Day. It's 710, and uh, if you're on the way home on the freeway, stay with us. If you got a car phone, feel free to, to call us. 
We're here. You'll be here, too. Now, once again, in case you just joined us, let me give the phone numbers one more time. And uh, if the lines are busy, as I say, uh, keep on calling. And the 213 or the 818 area code, it's 520-KLAC, 520-KLAC. And the 714 area code, it's 977-KLAC, 977-KLAC. Frank, I think it's time for round one. Let's go to the phone. See who's waiting for Wally out there. Hello, you're on the air with Wally George on KLAC. Who's this? Hi, Wally. This is Steve from Torrance. Steve, were you singing God Bless America? No, but I was listening. Well, Thank you should have sung it. I, I don't have a good voice. Well, we don't. Every, any, everybody sings yeah, God right. Bless America. Okay, now what, what's on your mind, Steve? Yeah, um, I'd like to ask you, what, um, I haven't heard your opinion on this, so I'd like to ask you, what's your opinion on the recent, public, uh, recent document publication regarding the RFK files, uh, uh, RFK assassination? I'm sorry. Well, uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, it... It really stinks to me. I don't think we're ever going to know the true facts about any of the Kennedy assassinations. The John F. Kennedy uh, assassination, the Robert F. Kennedy assassinations. Uh, you know, in the John Kennedy uh, case, the uh, all kinds of information was missing and strangely, uh, they say Oswald shot John Kennedy, then Jack Ruby shot Oswald, which shut him up where he couldn't talk, and then strangely, uh, Jack Ruby goes to the hospital and dies of cancer, which shuts him up. It really, really stinks. Yeah. And then as far as the Robert F. Kennedy uh, uh, thing goes, uh, all of the files, or lots of, of the files, seem to be missing. We don't know the whole story about Sirhan, Sirhan, was there a second gun, all that kind of stuff. I don't think we really are ever going to know the truth. It, it amazes me that a lot of the files on the RFK assassination, the Bobby Kennedy assassination, are, are missing yeah. from, from the LAPD. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So I think there's, there's some kind of a cover-up whether it's the mafia that was involved or something. I say there's a cover-up, and I don't think we're ever going to know the real truths about the assassinations of John F. Kennedy and Robert F. Kennedy. I think what we've heard is not everything we should hear. I don't think we know, and I think we should as Americans. What do you think? Let's go to the next caller. You're on the air with Wally George on KLEC. Go ahead. Hi, Wally. This is Paul Wilson from Bel Air. Well, how are you doing, Paul? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. And I guess what I want to say that I'm glad you got um, Bill Margold on the show tonight. You You're know? glad? Why are you glad? Well, you know, I don't really agree with all his positions, but it seems that whenever wait, wait, he's that's, on... Wait, that's, that, that's kind of a, a, a bad thing to say about Margold. You don't agree with his positions. I, I mean, that's kind of a bad terminology, I, I, I would think, uh, Mr. Uh, Wilson. Yeah, but he always provides stimulating conversation. Uh, that, that's another bad choice. You're out of here. Okay, probably one of your fans, Paul, uh, or rather, uh, Bill. Let's go to Orange County. You're on with Wally George on KLAC. Come in, Orange County. Hi, Wally. This is Tony calling from Fontana. Tony, can you talk up loud and clear? Hi, uh, Wally. This is Tony from Fontana. Can okay. you hear me now? Yes. Okay, I'd like to talk about President Reagan for a second. Okay. Okay, our media is just totally thrashing him in front of the whole world. I know. And at this time during the summit, we don't need that. It's making us look like fools. And what do you think we can actually do to get rid of that problem? Well, you see, it is... You're so right. It is such a, a terrible thing. Now, you know who really makes me sick is this Paul Conrad, Conrad in the L.A. Times. And right, right as, as uh, President Reagan was on his way to the summit, he wrote and drew the most slanderous, filthy cartoon uh, about our president. And, you know, the L.A. Times is seen all around the world in Moscow as, as well. And the way, yes, you're right, the way our press has not only criticized our president, the way they have humiliated him, the way they have tried to make him look like he's a senile, bumbling old fool, I say that is not only bad journalism, it is filthy, rotten subversion, in my opinion. It is not only hurting Ronald Reagan, it is hurting our country, it is undermining him as he is having these sensitive, very, very sensitive discussions with Gorbachev, and I think the media is just being absolutely un-American. Thanks a lot, Wally. Thanks for your call. Okay, Wally George here on KLAC. We'll be right back with the Great American Radio Show. More phone calls and all that. Stay where you are. Over the years, you've used the GTE Yellow Pages to find a wedding gown. Order a limousine. <laughs> 
a reception. Rent your first apartment. All with the help of the GTE Yellow Pages. You've used it to buy your first car. Buy your first house. Fix a leaky faucet. Move into a bigger house. And find a new plumber. <laughs> All with the help of the GTE Yellow Pages. You've used it to get your daughter a prom dress. And soon, buy another wedding gown. Order another limousine. <laughs> Book another reception. Find yet another plumber. And finally, take that long-planned vacation. <sighs> Because for over 50 years, the GTE Yellow Pages have been helping people find products and services when they need them. And no other book is more accurate or complete. Which is why your children will most likely be using the official GTE Yellow Pages for the next 50 years. Bank of America would like to announce an historic moment in home equity financing. We say no, and you like it. And I like it? We'll see. See how you like this. No appraisal fee. I like it. No new account fees. I like it. No documentation or recording fee. Yes, I definitely like it. And no points on adjustable rate loans. You're right. You say no, and I like it. With savings like this, you could get a $50,000 home equity loan or line of credit for as little as $100. And that's not all. B of A is giving away over 800 Sony Color TVs in their home equity with these sweepstakes. I like it, but what's that got to do with your saying no? No time to waste. Offer ends July 29th. To win the job, Bank of America. To win the job. An equal housing lender. No purchase necessary to enter sweepstakes. Open to residents of California 18 years or older. Some restrictions apply. Ask for details at any B of A branch. Excuse me, Mr. Thisbe? Yes, Medley, come in. What's on your mind? Well, Mr. Thisbe, I was wondering if I could have some extra vacation time this year. Well, you have two weeks coming. How much more do you need? Six. Six days? Six well, weeks. We six weeks? That's right, to go to Reno. For six weeks? Yeah, for Festival Reno. There's going to be entertainment and food, a jazz festival, and a fireman's muster. Something every day for six weeks. It's an amazing deal. Ooh. Make your vacation plans now for Festival Reno. Six weeks of fun, food, games, and music. Starting June 17th and lasting through July 31st. There's a road fireworks, festivals of food, jazz, and arts and crafts, and a lot more. So come to Reno for Festival Reno. We'll show you something different every day for six solid weeks. Festival Reno! Great thought, Smedley. And Smedley, yeah? what is a fireman's muster? Festival Reno, June 17th through July 31st. For more information, see our Festival Reno ad in the June 5th and June 19th issues of the Times Calendar. Or call toll-free 1-800-4-RENO. Now, back to the Wally George Great American Radio Show on 57 KLAC. Thank you, Steve LeBeau. Welcome, everybody. It's Steve LeBeau, our fine program director. And, of course, you can hear Steve every day, Monday through Friday. Normally, Steve took the day off today. Uh, Steve is normally on from uh, 3 until 7. Isn't that correct, Frank? Steve LeBeau, 3 until 7 p.m. I believe that's it. And, of course, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, it's KLAC for the best in country music. And we're here, of course, on Mondays. Tell your friends. And, of course, join us on television every day, Monday through Saturday. Monday through Friday, tomorrow and every day, Monday through Friday. Join me at 4.30 on KDOC TV Channel 56. 4.30 to 5, we do a commentary every day, and we take your phone calls like we're doing here. Then on Saturday night, we do our internationally syndicated... Hot Seat Show on Channel 56, KDOC, from 11 until 12 midnight. We interview the ludicrous liberal idiots of the world and burn them on the hot seat, along with my great live studio audience. Hot Seat now in its sixth year, from 11 until 12 midnight, Saturday nights, uh, from 11 to 12 on KDOC, Channel 56. Yeah. Okay, we're on open forum right now. Let's go back to our uh, phone calls. Line five. You're on with Wally George on KLAC. Go ahead. Hello, this is Diane from North Hollywood. Hello, Diane. Before I ask you my question, I first want to tell you, I was watching your hot seat, hot seat show last Saturday night. Yes. And you were saying you were going to be on some talk show. I forgot what show it was. Yeah, uh, late night. Late night. Right. What night? Friday night. Friday? Uh-huh. At what time? Uh, 11 o'clock. 11? Right. Okay. And, and what, what else is on your mind tonight? Um, do you think, don't you think that George Bush having a woman to, to, to pick as his vice president, don't you think it's going to ruin his chances? Well, I don't think he's going to have a woman. Where do you get the idea he's going to have a woman? 
I hear it on the news. Well, oh, do you believe everything you hear on the news? Listen, those guys who are saying that on the news are saying that because it's wishful thinking. They would love to have George Bush put a woman on the ticket because they know that the country is not ready to have a woman vice president, and they know if he does do that, he's going to lose the same way Walter Mondale did. I don't believe George Bush is going to put a, a woman. As a matter of fact, there's only one woman who could possibly uh, get my support for vice president, and that is Jean Kirkpatrick. And she will never get the nomination because she and George Bush do not get along at all. As a matter of fact, uh, Jean Kirkpatrick came out and worked on the uh, Bob Dole campaign. So, uh, and there's nobody else on the scene. So you can rest assured that George Bush will not pick a woman. Uh, and you, you, you can certainly rest assured it will not be Jane Fonda. Now, is, is there anyone else? Uh, who would you like to see George Bush pick as his running mate? Huh? Who would I? Yeah, who would you like to see uh, George Bush pick? I don't know offhand, but do you know who he's going to pick? Of course, as I know it. As long as it's not a woman or someone like that, you know, as long as it's somebody strong. How about Bob Dole? Bob Dole? Yeah, do, do you know who Bob Dole is? He's the other one running for president. Uh, right? he, he was running for president. Yeah. He would be a good one. I think he'd be great. He was strong. Robert Dole would, would be a good, strong candidate because he came in very close when he was running uh, for the Republican nomination. I, I think a, a, a team of Bush and Dole might be very, very strong, you know? Have you got an idea of who he's going to pick? I think, he, I think he might very well pick Bob Dole, and if not Bob Dole, uh, I think he may very well pick our own governor here, George Duke Magian. And you know why? Why? Do you know why he might pick George Duke Majin? Uh -huh. No, tell me. Well, because both Duke Majin and Bush have stated categorically, or at least their campaign directors have stated categorically, that they must carry California to win the election. Both of them have said that. Yeah. Both camps. And uh, George Bush's people said, we must carry California to win. Duke, uh, uh, Duke and his people have said, we must carry California to win. Now... George well, Duke, I want to ask hold, hold on, while he's still talking, okay. I'll tell you when. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> George Duke Majin is a very popular governor here in California, yeah. and, and he could help George Bush carry the Sunshine State. Yeah. Uh, that, that is California, isn't it? Uh -huh. And so uh, that might very well spell victory for George Bush. Now, my dear Diana, you may talk. Okay, is it true that Dukakis, if he wins, Jackson. He is going to pick Jackson as his vice president? Well, as a Republican, I certainly hope he does pick uh, Jesse Jackson because then he will lose by even a bigger landslide than Walter Mondale uh, lost uh, to Ronald Reagan. Not because, now, now don't start calling, oh, you're saying that because he's black. No, I'm don't not. Don't give me, say that. and don't anybody else say that. I'm saying it because Jesse Jackson is totally unqualified to even be running for office. I know uh, he hasn't even held one office, elective office anywhere, n nothing. He's totally unqualified, and if he were to become the vice president of the United States, he would be one heartbeat away from the presidency. So I hope that, that Dukakis does pick um, Jesse Jackson as, as the vice presidential nominee because then it'll be a landslide for Bush. What do you think about that? Obviously you agree with me, okay? Okay, uh, Next caller, you're on with Wally George on KLAC. Go ahead, please. Good evening, Wally. This is Britt from Westwood. Yes, Britt. How are you today? Happy oh, Memorial Day. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, I'm glad I was able to uh, get back to you. And I, the last time you and I talked, uh, I got cut off when I was yelling at Eddie there. Eddie uh, Goodwin? Oh, Eddie Goodwin, yeah. right. <laughs> okay, Wally. Uh, I, um, I want to, you know, I very much want to commend our veterans and our MIAs on this wonderful Memorial Day, but my subject tonight is very, very serious, Wally. Okay. Uh, Wally, first of all, I know you and he are occasionally foes, but I want to thank... Warren Downey for his revelation tonight that as an 11 year old child he was molested by the family doctor. Wait, 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 wait. Mort, Morton Downey, I, I don't believe he ever said that, but that's a get off my shoe. No, I'm not fond of Morton Downey, but, but I'm not going to have you spreading uh, all those kind of vicious rumors about. I, I mean, my God, it's a terrible thing to say. <laughs> Even I wouldn't say anything as terrible as that. Hello, 
Uh, you're on, by the way, speaking of, of Milton Dooney, uh, I, I certainly hope that he accepts my challenge to come in and meet me on the hot seat so people can see the original and the imitator side by side. <laughs> by the way, uh, I understand entertainment tonight is coming down uh, to do... Uh, a piece on my show, it's going to be on Entertainment Tonight, and one of the questions is going to be, what do you think of Morton Downey Jr.? And my answer, of course, is, uh, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. The only thing is, that little punk does a very poor impression of me. Don't you think so? I mean, come on. Every gesture, everything out of his stupid little mouth is me. But he hasn't got my big blue eyes. He hasn't got my shiny blonde hair. He hasn't got my big dimples and my big smile and my charm. So let's face it, Downey, you're finished. <laughs> Mark my words. Hear it now across this land. Morton Downey Jr., this time, next year will be working at a small FM station in Bakersfield, California. <laughs> but only for six months. Well, then once again, he'll be fired, and Downey will be on the unemployment line, where he belongs in the first place. Nothing personal, Milton. Let's, let's get back to our busy phones now. Hello, you're on there with Wally George on KLAC. Go ahead, please. Hello, Wally. Yeah, who's this? This is Bobby Hines from Los Angeles. Hey, Bobby, how are you tonight? Fine, how are you? Good. First of all, I want to thank you and Janet for that wonderful letter you sent me. Oh, well, thank you, Bobby. We always love to hear from you. You're one of our, our very uh, uh, favorite viewers and listeners. Thank you. Now, what I'd like to say is I want to know what America is coming to when we can let a murderer like Robert Chambers Jr., who strangled that girl in Central Park, yes. get off with murder, and we start prosecuting great heroes like Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North, who only who only thing he's guilty of is trying to stop communism in Central America and help the Contras. Well, Bobby, you're absolutely It really gets me upset. Well, it, it gets me upset, too, Bobby, because, because I, I think you, you and I are, are, are two Americans who, who think alike. That's right. Where is justice? When is justice going to prevail? You're absolutely right. Here they're spending all this time and money on a hero like Colonel Oliver North trying to, to smear him and to, uh, uh, to make him out a criminal when he is certainly a hero and and then they let cold-blooded murderers right out of jail for example that that uh, horrible animal who raped that that little 15 year old girl and chopped off both of her arms he shouldn't even be alive now today. now he's back on our city streets again and i say justice wherefore out thou in the united states of america wally george here on klac the wally george great american radio show 57 klac los angeles anaheim i'll be right back don't you dare go away This refreshing. Hi, this is Pat Summerall for True Value Hardware, your store of first choice. Does your home look like it's still living in the dreary days of winter? Redecorate and update your room with a new coat of True Test Easy Care Interior Latex Paint in four spatter resistant finishes and hundreds of decorator colors. You'll find True Test Easy Care Paint starting at just $9.98 a gallon during spring paint savings until June 5th at participating True Value Hardware stores and home centers. And tell them Pat Summerall sent you. Anytime you feel like pizza, here's a little trick. Top an English muffin with Ragu Pizza Quick. Ragu Pizza Quick sauce and some mozzarella cheese can turn any English muffin into a fresh, piping hot pizza. Anytime. The original, authentic Ragu Pizza Quick sauce. Big pizza taste on a little English muffin. Anytime you feel like pizza, here's a little trick. Top an English muffin with Ragu Pizza Quick. Anyone who 
has got anything to do with buying a home, building a home, or remodeling a home. I got news is definitely going to hit home. It's from California Federal, and it's about a brand new loan you won't find just anywhere. No, no, not by a long shot. California Federal calls it the single solution home loan. Why single solution? Right, let me give you an example. It lets you buy a fixer-upper and still pay for all the fixes, all with the same loan. Or it lets you buy a piece of land and build a house, all with the same loan. Oh, wait, there's more. It even lets you refinance the home you've already got and add a second bathroom or even a second story without getting a second mortgage. It's the single solution home loan, and trust me, you can do almost anything with it. But not till you visit your CalFed branch or call 1-800-7-CALFED for your nearest California Federal Loan Center. 1-800-7-CALFED. Find out about it. The single solution home loan. Because the way I see it, here's one equal opportunity lender with one terrific opportunity. Now, back to the Great American Radio Show with Wally George on KLAC. Thank you, Steve LeBeau. Welcome back, everybody. Wally George, Great American Radio Show, the most listened to radio program in the entire world. Are you crazy? Leave me alone. It sounds great. 7.32 on this Memorial Day weekend, and we're going to get to our guests, but right now it's open forum. Boy, the lines are really going today, Frank. Everybody's raring to go. Let's go to line two. You're on with Wally George on KLAC. Who's this? Uh, Wally, bless your heart. This is your Monday night caller from Linwood, Tommy here. Who, Tommy? Yeah. Hi, Tommy. How you doing tonight? Uh, you know, a while, uh, earlier tonight you uh, were playing God Bless America. That's right. And everybody's thinking... And the other night, Friday night, I don't know whether you happened to tune into Channel 2, but they paid a beautiful tribute to Irving Berlin yes. on his 100th birthday. On CBS, right. Yes. And I saw Frank Sinatra singing there, and boy, that was a great tribute to a great American, Irving you Berlin. You better believe it. And boy, when I think of that song, I think of him because... Uh, of course, of course, we... I hope you all know Irving Berlin wrote God Bless America. I know, and Kate Smith. I always think of Kate Smith every time I hear it. Well, I'll tell you, I, I'm glad that you're calling us to remind me of that because uh, Kate Smith was America, and uh, she made us all cry when she sang that uh, during the war. During oh, war. do I ever remember. And I'll tell you, uh, Irving Berlin wrote more songs to lift our spirits during those hard times. God bless him. He's still going strong, and... Uh, and thanks, Tommy, for bringing that up. Yeah, God bless Irving Berlin and all of those great people who helped America sing and help their spirits during trying times. Hello, you're on with Wally George on KLAC. Go ahead, please. Oh, this is Mike from Los Angeles. Yes, Mike, go ahead. Uh, how, uh, I just wanna, I'm a Filipino-American. Okay. And uh, I just want to tell you, you know, I, I think highly of your opinion. I respect, I'm a big fan of yours. Thank you. Okay, and I just want to, uh, like, what, what's your opinion on the Philippines as a nation, like as a country? Like, you look, you think it's a good... You know, do you I, think it's good or I good? certainly do, but you know what? I hate to have to say this, but I think that the country was uh, maybe doing a little better under Marcos. What do you think? Oh, I think so. I think so too. See, I, I was, I'm a Marcos supporter myself. You know, I, I think, I think, um, say, uh, you know, my relatives who still live there say that things, you know, things are still a little bit bad, even with Aquino as president. Well, well you know, they. They always talk about uh, Marcos, and they say that, that uh, Mrs. Marcos was buying a lot of shoes. Yes. Big deal. <laughs> but, but, I mean, I think he was doing pretty good for the, uh, for the people there, don't you? Oh, so do I. So do I. In fact, I, I get a lot of, of mail f from, uh, from people from the Philippine Islands, yes. and they say exactly the same thing, that they were sorry to see President Marcos go, that he was kind of railroaded out, out of office. Do you think so? Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Because, I because listen, totally there is no leader in the world who is absolutely 100% perfect. Sometimes you've got to take the lesser of two evils. It's the same in Iran with the Shah of Iran and now the Ayatollah. Yeah. They criticize the heck out of the Shah, but by God, when you look at him compared to the Ayatollah, the Shah was, was sensational compared to what they have now. And the same thing, I think, holds true in, in the Philippines. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. I, I mean, Mrs. Aquino... Bless her. I, I mean, she's trying, but she's just a, a, a housewife. Uh -huh. and, and she hasn't been able to stabilize that country. But thank you for your call. Okay, okay. thank you, Wally. Okay. You know, it's amazing. I mean, people do believe that in the Philippines, that Marcos was good. Next caller, you're on the air with Wally George on KLAC. Go ahead. Yeah, Wally, this is Paul from San Francisco. 
From San Francisco. From San Francisco. Well, are, you, are you calling me from there? No, no, no. I fortunately <laughs> was able to make a trip down to L.A., and I always catch your show. You well, thank to, you. You used to be on up in the uh, city. On Channel 20, right. Right, but you're no longer there. Yeah, well, the, uh, the reason why is, uh, well, I, I hate to get in, into personals, but, but I was attacking the gay community. Oh, you can't do that up there, Wally. You can't do it in San Francisco, and they put such pressure on Channel 20 and on the sponsors of Channel 20 that they, they forced my show off the air in San Francisco. But we are we're are talking to some stations up there now, and we hope to have our station our show back on the air in San Francisco very, very soon. I hope, I hope you can do it. The reason I'm calling is I'm wondering if there's any way we can lure you from Los Angeles to come up to San Francisco and straighten up <laughs> our political mess. <laughs> you, do have, you do have a problem up there with, with your new mayor, don't you? Oh, man, the guy... The guy he doesn't like the military. He yeah. wants to get rid of the United States ship in Missouri. He's yeah, I know. Our police. He won't. He doesn't want the Olympics. I mean, all he wants to do is repeal the GAN initiative and raise our property taxes. Yeah, yeah. He, he's a real loser. He sounds a lot like our mayor, Tom Bradley, who I may try to unseat next year. Did you know that I, I'm thinking of running for mayor of Los Angeles? I, I've heard that, and I hope I I hope it works out for you, Wally. I think that you'd be a, a definite addition to. Well, we, we need to get Bradley out of here. I mean, he allows people like Bill Margold to to roam the streets, oh. and, and, and that alone is enough to get him out of office, in my opinion, because everyone knows Margold should be lo ha had been locked up long oh, ago. ago. Yes, but, but he, he allows people like Margold to, to wa roam the streets, uh, uh, and it, it's just horrifying. So I'm thinking very, very seriously, uh, trying to take on Bradley. You know, we... Uh, took a survey here in Los Angeles not long ago, an independent survey that pitted me against Tom Bradley. And, uh, if, and they said in, in the poll, if Wally George was running against Tom Bradley, who would you vote for? And believe it or not, at that time, I got 40% of the vote, which is pretty good when I haven't even announced. So I, I think Bradley is, is probably shaking in his little boots in City Hall saying, oh, please, don't, don't let Wally run against me. I could beat anybody, but I couldn't beat Wally. I could beat Zev, but I couldn't beat Wally. So, uh, anyway, I've invited uh, Tom Bradley many, many times to come down and debate me on my show face-to-face -face so I can tell him what a little twerp he really is and how badly he has hurt Los Angeles. But naturally, you know, folks, Bradley is a wimp. He refuses to face me on the air, on the radio show or the television show. You know, and, and this is the excuses they give me. I, I get calls all the time from the mayor's office saying, you got to lay off the mayor. Why are you picking on him so much? And I say, well, why don't you have him come down and meet me on my show, and, and he can debate me. And their people have said to me, oh, no, we wouldn't let him come down on the hot seat. That's an embarrassment to the mayor, you know, and, and it, it wouldn't be, uh, uh, you know, the right thing for the mayor to go down there with all those screaming kids. So I said, okay, then he can come on KLAC with me, and I'll give him the whole three hours. And they kind of hemmed and hawed and hawed and hemmed, and they said, we'll get back to you. That was about eight months ago, and we haven't heard from him since. So obviously, Bradley is afraid to meet Wally face to face. But he may have to if I run, because then Bradley will have to meet me in face to face debate. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's right. Bro. Maybe the campaign has already begun, Frank. You never, you never know. There they are. The campaigners are there. Let's go to the next caller. Hello, you're on the air with Wally George on KLAC. Go ahead, please. Yeah, Wally, this is Tony from Hawthorne. Yes, Tony. I want to talk to you about the death penalty. Okay. I, I'm so sick and tired of hearing all these people, especially criminals, who go to jail. They killed someone in a brutal act of violence. They had no mercy or compassion. Yeah. And the first thing they say is, well, I don't believe in the death penalty, or I can be rehabilitated. I mean, what a joke that this is allowed to go on. You know, if society doesn't start doing something to punish these people properly, I think people are going to start taking the law into their own hand because a few years in jail is going to mean nothing to avenge somebody's daughter who gets her arms cut off. Well, you know what? What really alarms me is uh, that Michael Dukakis, uh, who wants to uh, be the president of the United States, it is well known that Dukakis, and he, and he admits this, is totally against the death penalty in the United States of America. And you know, 
Why Dukakis says he's against it? He says because it's wrong to kill people. Wally? Now, now what does he think his, uh, the, the, these murderers have, have done? Wally? Yes. Tell him to move his family in the middle of South Central L.A. Exa live there for a exactly. while and then say that. Well, he says he's against the death penalty because it's wrong to kill people. Well, you know, what does he tell to the criminals? Yeah, well, when you, when you put someone to death who's a convicted first-degree murderer, that's not killing, that's not murder, that is just punishment. That's right. The Bible says the same thing. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Right. You're right. Thanks for calling. Thank you, Wally. Call, call me again soon. Well, we're getting some nice callers on, Frank, thanks to you. Uh, let's go back to Orange County. Hello, you're on the air with Wally George on KLAC. Go ahead. Hello, Orange County. Oh, we, we lost Orange, Orange County. Okay, well, the Orange County line is now open, so you can get through. Hello, you're on with Wally George on KLAC. Go ahead. Good evening, Wally. This is Rob from Los Angeles. Who? Robert. Robert. Angeles. Yes, go ahead, Robert. Thank God for Wally on Mondays. It'd be boring as all heck if you weren't on, Wally. Well, thank you, Robert. Uh, Wally, a few months ago, you had a debate with uh, Gloria Outred about gays in the Army. Right. I think the principal issue is that since the AIDS virus, they say uh, it takes like about six months or so to show up in your blood. Right. Let's say there's a war. People get hurt. They start bleeding. Now, there are other people next to them who are hurt. Uh, somebody, a gay who goes in, gets checked. Does, they, it doesn't, he doesn't test positive yet for the AIDS virus. He goes in there. He gets hurt. His buddies around him get hurt. He starts bleeding all over them. Starts bleeding all over the corpsmen. Then what happens? You're exactly right. And that's the reason why I say that AIDS victims must be isolated from society, and Gloria says that's heartless and cruel. To heck with that, I worry about those of us here in the United States of America who have not been infected, and I say that you can get AIDS by casual contact. Uh, there are many nurses who have, and dentists who have caught AIDS just by a flick of blood uh, that, that, that they have got on them. One little drop of blood can bring you the AIDS virus and give you this deadly, deadly disease. And so I say we must isolate AIDS victims from society uh, completely until we find a cure. And no matter what Gloria uh, has to say. Next caller, you're on with Wally George on KLAC. Go. Oops. Sight. Sorry to hang up on me, did you? Hello, you're on the air with Wally George on KLAC. Go ahead, please. Yeah, this is a... Uh this is uh, Elvin Ross from Lameda. Elvin? Yeah. Oh, okay, Elvin, will you turn down your, your radio? We're on, down. We're on 10 second delay. Turn it down. Yeah. Turn it way down. Way, way down. Turn it down. Okay, go ahead. Uh, so okay, what, yeah, this is Elvin Ross from uh, Lameda. What's on your mind, Elvin? Uh, I want to talk about uh, Jackson. Jackson? Okay, go ahead. Uh, I noticed that you said that you didn't have no, uh, you said he didn't have no education or no, no I, whatsoever. I said he is not qualified in any way to run for president of the United States. What makes you feel that way? What makes me feel that way? Because he hasn't held any elective office. Uh, he has never uh, at all ever been in any form of government whatsoever. Not only that, he has done some very ludicrous things. He has embraced Yasser Arafat, supported the PLO, if you will, has taken on Israel and the Jews. Uh, he has done some horrifying things in Cuba. He embraced Fidel Castro and said, long live Castro, Fidel Castro, enemy to the United States of America, and on and on I could go. All right. You say that, and you've got that in your mind and everything, but I've got one question for you. And what is that? Have you ever been a poor black child? Well, I mean, now what kind of a question is that? Now, you, you, you know I have not been a poor black child, for heaven's sake, but what does that got to do with it? I mean, come on, Elvin. Have I ever been a poor black child? Wait a minute. Come to think of it? When I was about seven years old, for about six months, I was a poor black child. I didn't like it at all. I'll be right back. Stay where you are. Adam, I need something different for my body. Eve, there's nothing wrong with those fig leaves. No, Adam. I mean a multivitamin. Within. Within? It's called Within. The multivitamin with the most calcium, plus extra iron and essential vitamins a woman needs within. Well, Eve, some needs are different, but just remember your one basic need. Just remember, this is paradise, not fantasy land. Within from one a day. As different from other multivitamins as women are different from men. Now, all
Ralph's and the Giant stores stay open 24 hours every day. That means now you get big savings on your groceries all day and all night. In fact, this week's specials are so good, you'll probably want to drop by tonight. Anytime is fine. Get ready to celebrate with these Memorial Day savings. USDA inspected golden premium fresh ground beef is only 89 cents a pound. With Ralph's Giant Unlimited Double Coupon, get a 24-can case of Coke, Pepsi, Slice, or Sprite in assorted varieties for just $2.99 with manufacturer's coupon and Ralph's Giant bonus coupon. Here's something wild. A free children's admission ticket to both the San Diego Zoo and Wild Animal Park with every $25 minimum purchase. Price is good through June 1st. All stores open 24 hours except were prohibited or restricted. Details at Ralph's or the Giant. When it comes to saving you money, we're always ready. Ralph's and the Giant. Together, a smarter way to shop. 24 hours a day. Wally's Mechanoram. Is my car ready? This is Mr. Peters. Yeah, hold on. Oh, uh, what'd you say your name was? Peters, Michael Peters. Oh, yeah, hang on. Hey, we don't have anything here for Peter Michaels. That's Michael Peters. Oh, yeah, hold on. If you ever get the feeling your mechanic doesn't know what he's doing, go see a 76 ProTech mechanic at Unical. They're thoroughly trained and retested every three years, so they're experts on tune-ups, wheel alignments, repairing brakes, and air conditioning. You can count on a ProTech mechanic doing things right. Are you still there? Yeah. Oh, here it is, Michael Peters. So when can I pick it up? Pick what up? The car. Oh, that's hard to say. Uh, we got your engine all apart. What do you mean the engine's all apart? What do you mean, what do I mean? They're still trying to find the trouble. What trouble? I only wanted the tires rotating. Why did you say so? I did. Oh. Hey, it's not the engine. If you'd like a mechanic to solve problems instead of create them, see a 76 Protect mechanic. Call 1-800-447-4700 for the Protect dealer nearest you. And now, back to the Wally George Great American Radio Show on 57 KLAC. Thank you, Steve LeBeau. Happy Memorial Day, everybody. And uh, God bless our servicemen. In case you missed my opening commentary, we certainly pay tribute to them. You know, uh, uh, regarding that last call about Jesse Jackson, it really bothers me. You know, I, I can take cracks at anybody else who happens to be of lighter skin, and nobody ever says anything that I'm a racist. I, uh, but if I happen to criticize anyone of darker skin, Mayor Bradley, Jesse Jackson, they never listen to why I criticize them. It's only, aha! You're only saying that because he's black. And I say that's ridiculous. Do you know that when, when uh, Simon was running for the Democratic nomination, uh, he was not picking on Jesse Jackson at all, and someone asked Paul Simon, well, you're criticizing Dukakis and all the others. Why aren't you saying anything bad about Jesse Jackson? And Paul Simon, candidate for the Democratic nomination, said... Well, you got to be careful what you say about Jesse Jackson because they might think you're a racist. And I say that's wrong. You must let the chips fall where they may. You don't lay off of a politician because he's a certain color. Now, that's reverse racism. Then it's being unfair to the Caucasian candidates. I say you must say it the way it is. And that's the way I've always been. I've been on the air, folks, for over 35 years, for God's sake, for, uh, for on radio and television, for gosh sake, pardon me. I've been on the air for 35 years, and I have criticized 99% of the people that I've criticized in public office have been white. About 1% have been black. Now, I am not going to hold back my criticisms on Bradley or Jesse Jackson because they happen to be black. I would say the same thing about Jesse Jackson if he were white, yellow, plaid, or polka dot. I don't care about the color. This man is obviously unqualified to be President of the United States. He's never held any office in any government. He's never even been a mayor or anything. Knows nothing about government, knows nothing about foreign affairs and has been uh, very close to people like uh, uh, Fidel Castro, Yasser Arafat, Louis Farrakhan, who, who have called uh, white people satanic. He has confessed that as, as a young man, he spit in the food of his customers when he was a waiter, his white customers. I mean, he is, he's been trying to conduct foreign policy around the world. And I'm not saying that because he's 
a dark color. And the same thing about Bradley. Bradley, if you look at his record, he's done absolutely nothing but hurt Los Angeles. Look at the streets of Los Angeles, the perverts, the prostitutes, the pushers who are roaming the streets here. Look at the, the stores that you find on Hollywood Boulevard. Before BB, before Bradley, there were beautiful restaurants and fur salons and, and beautiful stores and movie stars walking down Hollywood Boulevard. Not anymore. Now it's perverts, prostitutes, and pushers and pimps and margold <laughs> and worse. And look at the kind of stores they have on Hollywood Boulevard. Sex shops, pornography stores, for heaven's sake. Down, look at downtown Los Angeles. Trash all over the streets. Winos staggering down. Uh, nobody wants to go into Los Angeles. You, you, you dare not walk down the streets of Los Angeles at night anymore. Why? Because the mayor has allowed this to happen and I say we gotta put an end to it. You're on the air with Wally George on KLAC. Go ahead, please. Yeah, this is David from Reseda. David, I can hardly hear you. Speak up. Okay, uh, I uh, saw your show on a Saturday night with the uh, female mud wrestlers. Yes. And I think the girls won the debate as usual. Yeah, well, you would, uh, of course, being uh, uh, some kind of a perverted person who loves mud wrestlers. Get out of here. We had some female mud wrestlers on, on my show on Saturday night on the Hot Seat Show, and, and they're degrading, and I want to see them out of here. Next caller. Hello, you're on the air with Wally George on KLAC. Go ahead, please. Hi, Wally. This is Jim from, from uh, Panorama City. Yes, Jim. And you were talking about justice a little while ago. Yes. And I'd like to go back right to uh, 76 or 78 when, when the busing initiative was on the ballot. Yes. Do you remember that? Yes, I sure do. All right, well... Well, it occurred to me that, you know, the people, all of us that voted on it, carried that no busing. No busing, right. Right, all right, it was carried. And and and, and then some judge says, well, we're going to bust them anyhow. It doesn't matter what you people say. I mean, where is the justice? 